Hey guys, welcome back to Floki's Models. Uh, today we're going to do a um, stash update, little channel update here for the... Well, it's almost the end of the month now. So, uh, let's dive in. Okay, let's start out with uh, some new tools that I picked up. First ones are the single bladed nippers from uh, Master Tools. So I've been hearing a lot of good things about single bladed side cuts and really didn't want to jump in and spend the money for a set of god hands but I found uh, these that are also single bladed apparently Master Tools is owned by Trumpeter I've used them on the bird dog build and I wish I would have got a pair of these a lot sooner they cut through sprue like butter next uh, set of tools I picked up is uh, pay like $16 for the set of tweezers on Amazon I needed some new ones and these got really really fine points on them and comes with all these got a whole bunch of different side of these are more skinny got a pair a little bit fatter these here seem a they're got like a rounded bit on it instead of being flat or pointed I mean these here are more heavy duty and they got texture on the inside of them. This one's like a spatula tip. This here's got a really fine hook on it. I'm really not sure what that'd be useful for, but I'm sure it's got its place. We got some that's got slight bends in it. Again with fine tip. Uh, this is bent, but it's more heavy duty. Again, it's got some texture in there. These are fine tip and got a nice little bend. And these, I think this, these here, these be, be good for doing photo etch on a ship where you have to get in someplace really tight. Oh, I just went right through the plastic. That's how sharp them things are. <laughs> and these here also got a pretty good bend in them, but not as, uh, not as long. And the last pair didn't want to come out of the Okay, I can't get them out again. They're stuck again, but they're a, a locking pair with a fine point. Uh, and then last piece in here is I'm not actually sure what it's supposed to be. It's not metal. It's chrome plated plastic. I mean, this ends, you know, a, a chisel. But I'm uh, really not sure that's supposed to be. It kind of looks like something, you know, the, you'd use to remove a a screw or I mean a nail but being plastic that will break the first time you try to put any pressure on it and it all comes in this little case so I'll be using these and I think they're gonna work out fine next up is some research material that I picked up I recently went to the IPMS show down in Indianapolis and I picked up some books uh, there and some model kits that we'll be looking at here later but uh, let's start with uh, the books uh, David Doyle, he uh, is a book writer and he sells his own books on his website. But he also bought up some uh, old stock from an old company and he's uh, selling uh, other people's books and at a discount. And one of the ones I picked up from him is this German U-Boat Bunkers, Yesterday and Today. Um, I've won a, I don't want to do a, a U-Boat, I've won... Uh, 350 scale and put it in a, a pen so I figured this book right here the price is right on it and I figured it'd be a good reference material for that another book that I picked up on David Doyle's website again it's not one of his but is the Legends of Warfare on the Mr. Smith BF 110 I've always I've always liked this uh, plane I think it's probably the 
the best looking fighter aircraft to come out of uh, Germany during World War II. Uh, just something about it. I really like it. And the third book I picked up from this one is actually written by David Doyle is his new USS Indianapolis book. I got a the Indy in the stash and I plan on building it here. Uh, hopefully get started on it this year. Probably towards the end of the year. So figured this year be a also great reference material when it comes to building that. Yet another book, again, this was written by David Doyle. It's uh, P-38 Lightning, Volume 1, on the from the XP-38 to the P-38H. And again, it's a Legends of Warfare book. And it's got a lot of uh, great reference material in it. And my next aircraft is going to be the uh, Tamiya P-38. So we'll be taking a look at that kit uh, towards the end of some extra stuff that I got for it uh, that I got down at the swap meet. Now this book I didn't order from his website, but when I was down at the Roscoe Turner in Indianapolis, it's like David Doyle, he was set up there selling his stuff, and I picked up his book on the North Carolina. So, I don't have one in the stash yet, but it is on the wish list to get. And the last book that I picked up while I was down there is a Eagle Editions, Eagle Files number 2. It's written by Jerry Crandall. And of course this goes in about the the Dora, which I love again, I really like the, the Dora. I got three or four more in the stash to build. So this here would be helpful when it comes to building them. Alright, now on to model kits. The first one up is this fine mold Star, uh, Star Wars Y-Ring Starfighter. Um, I actually won this one in the raffle. I got a Bandai kit in the stash and Bandai their kits well they got more detail than the older fine molds kit not that there's anything wrong with these kits but I don't know I might build this I might decide to, to sell it I'm not sure yet we'll see what happens the next kit that I got while I was down at the swap meet was this Japanese M6A1 I have no idea about this kit I have I know nothing about the airplane. Uh, what I do know about it is they was launched uh, from uh, submarines. And I've been wanting to build something with floats. So I figured i seen this. It was a good price. Uh, everything at this vendor's table was half off. So I only paid $12 for the kit. Ah, I'm kind of thinking already about... Uh, making a little diorama about them pulling one out from uh, the tube area. It's like, that's something I could probably, you know, end up scratch building. But I also got uh, several 3D printers, including a resin Alugo uh, Mars, or sorry, Alugo Saturn. Uh, I s end up selling my Mars to get it. But, I don't know, I might be able to model something like this, too. And, um... Uh, Fusion 360 and end up printing it out in resin, so we'll see what happens again. Another aircraft kit I picked up down there was this DO-335A. I uh, built the single seat version of this, uh, was it last year? Yeah, last year. And when I seen the twin seat trainer down there, it's like I just had to pick it up because it was such a great build that I'm sure the twin seater will be just as good and I end up getting this at the same vendor and again everything at his table was half off so the price was excellent this kit I didn't buy at the swap meet it actually I bought this at the same time as the bird dog um, this is an ICM kit hopefully this kit is a lot better than that bird dog was but I might build it here this year or I might I might hold off on it uh, I got I got so many many things I want to build this year so we'll see what happens another kit that I picked up um, not at the swap meet but I got this one on eBay uh, a couple months ago and it finally came in apparently it did a 50 city tour of China before it uh, came here but it's the MiG-29 that I'm planning on doing in uh, Ukrainian markings. Because, you know, the hell with Russia. 
I have no idea again about modern <laughs> kits or well not modern kits but uh, modern aircraft so this is going to be a big learning experience for me and I also picked up for it uh, I got this off of uh, Sprue Brothers but is this Quint Quinta Studio it's a uh, resin uh, 3d printed cockpit parts like your instrument panel and your side panel and it's been 3d printed on decal film so I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this stuff this is gonna be the first time I've ever used something like this for this build but again it's all gonna be a learning experience so why not all right how about an armor kit this here I picked up again at the Roscoe Turner it is a TACCOM Panther A early uh, with full interior I built the TACCOM's uh, King Tiger with full interior uh, two years ago and the way I did it was I made it a, a cutaway build I had the turret out setting separately I also had the engine displayed separately and I omitted the two uh, shell holders on this side so you could see into it better because I cut this side out but I'm really not sure how I'm going to do this one because there's a lot more going on on the driver's side of this and compared to the King Tiger. The King Tiger I didn't have much of anything up, up here and I would think I was able to still utilize it. But we'll, uh, we'll see when we get there. I'll make a plan of attack once uh, we get into building. The next kit I picked up was one I've been looking for for, uh, for a while. It is the Dragon SD KFZ 251 slash 22. It's a half track with a big PAK 40 on it. Which that is an awful big gun for, you know, this uh, light vehicle. But this here is actually going to be uh, my entry into artillery group build on uh, the Micro Machines podcast. So I'll leave a link down in the description for. Uh, their YouTube channel and you know I guess the more the merrier over there so I'll be doing an unboxing video uh, next it would be coming out here uh, within a few days hopefully about getting started on this the group build starts uh, May 1st so it is definitely gonna be my next kit to build and the last kit to show is the new P38 Lightning. Now this kit, I, oh, I've just been wanting so bad. I've been wanting a good fitting P38 and 148 scale for a long time. And all the reviews say this is the one. So I am really excited about this. I got some extras for it too. Got some uh, Masters Metal gun barrels to replace the plastic ones in the kit. I got a new set of uh, decals. These are from Edward. And the reason why I went with these, I didn't like any of the uh, two marking options that came with the kit. Because when I, when I think P-38 in the Pacific, I'm thinking, you know, pin-up nose art. And this just so happens to have some of that on here. So we'll be going with one of them options. And the last thing I picked up for this build is this Edward uh, Space Set, which it's kind of like the ones that I showed you earlier. These are resin 3D printed uh, cockpit parts on decal film. Kind of like, you know, they're photo etch, but, you know, instead it's resin. But it also comes with uh, some photo etch detail down here, like the seat belts. Eh, it looks like a couple little panels for the sidewalls. So we'll definitely be going to be using at least these parts. I was thinking about getting some HGW belts to go with this as well. I just love the, the extra look of them. But I'm going to see how well we can get the PE to look first before I invest in that. Because, yeah, I've already got a little bit of money tied up into this. So, Well, guys, that is all for now. Um, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, I usually don't buy this much stuff at one time, 
but anytime I go to the to the swap meet, I always end up taking you know a little bit of extra money with me because I know I'm gonna find some stuff that I want, and this is really the only time that I add to the stash in big amounts. Uh, most of the time for the year, I'm just buying stuff like paint and uh, PE parts and you know extras to detail up the kits that I already have. So. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and let me know what uh, which one is your favorite down in the comments, and what you want to see built. I said the next one is gonna be the one for the for the group build, since I committed to that. And uh, the next aircraft I want to build, I really want to build this one next uh, for our aircraft. But uh, we'll see how it goes. But again, everybody, thank you for watching. Um, and, you know, please like and subscribe. Like I said, comment down below of what you want to see built or what, what you like the best. And stay tuned for many more builds and reviews and incoherent ramblings to come.